Hello guys and welcome to Python programming tutorials by Amulya's Academy. We were discussing about data structures and in that we were discussing about doubly linked list. Previously in the data structure video series we discussed about the theory part of doubly linked list, how it operates and its operations. Today we'll write the program to implement the doubly linked list in Python. And I'll use the singly linked list program as the base for today's tutorial. That means you need to watch the previous few tutorials on the singly linked list and the program which we have returned to implement the singly linked list. I'll give you the link of all the videos in the description box. Previously while writing the Python program to implement singly linked list, we created two classes. One is called as node class which will help us to create a node. Next we created the linked list class and later we added few methods to the linked list class where each method will do different operation of the singly linked list. For the doubly linked list also we'll do the same thing. We'll use class concept to write the program. We'll create two class. One is node class and another one is doubly linked list class. And in the doubly linked list class we'll add methods which will perform different operation of the doubly linked list. Alright, so let's write the program. Firstly, here I have the singly linked list program. Link of all the videos are in the description box. So here we can see class node first. Next here we can see class linked list. So first I'll copy this class node because we are creating the class node today. So I'll copy that and here I'll paste that in the new file. And in the node class we have initialization method self and data as the parameter self dot data is equal to data self dot reference is equal to none. That means when we create a node data field will be assigned user will give you the data and that will be assigned to data field and the reference is taken as none. If I create a node with the data as 10 then I'll get the node like this reference will be none by default. Now we need to write the program for doubly linked list. In the doubly linked list a node contains data field and two links right next node link as well as previous node link. So now here I need to take a data field and two links. So for that I'll take the first link as n reference that is the next reference and for the previous reference I'll take PREF the variable as PREF which will represent the previous reference. So I'll take both the reference as none initially. So now when I create a node with data field as 10 then I'll get node like this. We have data field 10 and the previous reference as none and the next reference as none. So this is the initial condition of the node. So now we are done with the node class. Next let's create the doubly linked list class. So I'll take the linked list name as WLL, LL for linked list. You can take any suitable name and inside that first I need to take the initialization method like we did in the singly linked list and here also I need to take the parameter as self because uh, self parameter is must in every method of the class. Next here what I want to initialize in the linked list. I want to initialize head right. So I will take self dot head as none. So initially I am taking the linked list is empty. We did the same with the singly linked list right. Initially we will take the linked list as empty. For that I need to assign head as none. Head is the starting point of the linked list. If I take that as none that means linked list is empty. Next we need to add different methods to this doubly linked list class now and here every method represent the operation of the doubly linked list. In the previous tutorial while discussing about the doubly linked list and its operation we discussed three operation that is insertion operation, deletion operation and traversal operation. So today in this tutorial we'll discuss about the traversal operation and in the next tutorial we'll talk about the rest two operations. So today's topic is traversing the doubly linked list. Now traversing is the process where we'll go through each node and we'll print its data. Because doubly linked list contains two links, link to the next node as well as link to the previous node, we can traverse in both forward direction as well as backward direction. So we can have forward traversing operation and backward traversing operation. 
In the forward traversing operation, we'll go to the first node and we'll print its data and we'll go to the next node and we'll print its data and we'll go to the next node and we'll print the data of that node. And in the backward traversing operation, we'll start from the last node and we'll go to the la second last node like this way in this direction. So we'll get the data of the nodes in the reverse order. First we'll get 30, next 20, next 10. So let's see how to do forward and backward traversing. First we'll talk about the forward traversing. So in the forward traversing, first we need to begin with the first node and we need to print its data and next we need to go to the next node and next we need to print its data and next we need to go to the next node. We need to do this until we'll reach the last node. To do this, what I'll do is first I'll take the first node as n means I need to take n as self dot head. Head is the starting point of every linked list, right? Now if I want first node, then I need to take n as self head. So now n is the first node. Next, I need to print n dot data, the data present in that. After that, I need to go to the next node, right? So for that, I need to take n as n dot n reference. That means here now, n is this, right? After printing its data, I need to go to the next node. The reference of the next node is stored here. Here, this is the next node reference, right? That's why I need to take n equal to n dot reference. So now n becomes 4100. That means this is n now. Next, again, I need to print the data and again, I need to change n value to go to the next node. Right here, I need to print the data, n dot data of this node and I need to stop because here we don't have any other node. This is the last node. So we need to repeat these two lines again and again. That's why I need to include this in a loop. So for that, I'll use while loop and here I'll take the while condition as while n is not none. Because here you can see this is the last node. When n becomes this node, I need to print the data n dot data that is 30. After that, I'll change n value. So now n becomes none. That is n equal to n dot reference. n dot reference is none. So n becomes none. Now at that time, I need to stop. That's why I need to take while n is not none. Traversing the doubly linked list and singly linked list in the forward direction is same. That's why in the singly linked list program, I'll copy this method. This method is used to traverse the singly linked list. I took the method name as println. So I'll copy this and here I'll paste that. I'll take the same method name. If you want, you can change. We don't need any other parameter. First here, we'll check whether linked list is empty because if linked list is empty, there is nothing to print. That's why first I need to check linked list is empty. If you want to check linked list is empty or not, you can check self.head. If self.head is none, that means the linked list is completely empty. If it is not, linked list is not empty. That's why here I'll check this condition. If self.head is none, if yes, print linked list is empty. Otherwise, take the first node as the n and uh, print its data like this. Here, to go to the next node, you need to take n equal to n dot reference because here I changed link name, right? So for the next reference, you need to take n dot n reference. And you need to write these two lines within the while loop. And here you need to take the condition as while n is not none. Okay, so this is about how we can traverse in the forward direction. So this is the method for that. So next, let's talk about the backward traversing. How to print the nodes of the linked list in the reverse order. So for this, firstly, I'll copy same thing. Okay, like this. I'll copy and paste. And here I'll take print LL in reverse. For the backward traversing, I'll take the method name as reverse print ll in reverse and nextly first step is same you need to check self head is none or not if self dot head is none then i'll print the message linked list is empty otherwise if linked list is not empty then we need to go to the last node here this is the last node and we need to print its data after that we need to go to the next node that is the previous node of that and we need to print its data Next, we need to go to the previous node and we need to print its data. So to do this, we have two problem. One is how to go to the last node. Because if I want to go to the first node, 
I can do that because we know the linked list will start from head. So I can take n equal to self dot head. But here we want to start traversing from the last node. Then how to go to the last node? And the second problem is after going to the last node, how to get the previous node of the last node. So we have these two challenges. So for that, the solution is for the first problem, that is how to go to the last node. For that, what I can do is I can use a loop and initially I, I can take this as n and I can traverse to the every node and I can reach here the last node. In the previous uh, method, what we did, we took the first node as n and we'll print its data and we'll go to the next node using next reference. But here what I'll do is I'll take first node as n and I won't print its any data. I'll just go to the next node. I'll take n equal to n dot reference. I'll increment the n value and I'll go to the next node. Okay, in this way you can reach the last node. Firstly, I need to take n equal to self dot head. This will be the n. Next, I need to take n equal to n dot n reference. That means n equal to n dot reference. n become 4100. This node becomes n now. Again, I need to increment the n or I need to change the n value. I need to take n equal to n dot reference. I need to execute this again. So that's why I need to include this in a while loop. And here I need to write the stopping condition where you want to stop changing the n value. That is after reaching this node, I need to stop. In this node, you can see the n reference is none, right? If I take this as n, n dot n reference is none. If I take n dot n reference is not none, if if it is not none, change n value. If it becomes none, then stop. I'll show you how it works. So initially this line will be executed n equal to self dot head. So this will become n. Next it will check while n dot n reference is not none. Here n dot n reference is 4100. It is not none. It will change n value. Now n becomes this. Now again it will check while n dot n reference is not none. Yes, 2200 is not none here. This condition is true. It will change n value. Now n value becomes n dot n reference. So 2200 becomes n now. So that is nothing but this node. Now again, it will check whether n dot n reference is not none. Here we can see this is n and n dot n reference is none here. So I need to stop. So it will stop. Now we have n pointing to here. We move to the last node. Okay. Using this code, we can reach to the last node. So let's write this code now. So here in the else part, first I need to take n dot self head and here I need to take n dot n reference is not none. And here I don't want to print anything. Just delete this and increment the n value. So in this way, it will reach to the last node. We'll reach to the last node. Now let's take the solution for the next problem. That is how to get the previous node. Using previous code, we'll reach to last node that is n now. So next I'll print its data. So we'll get n dot data. So it will print 30. Now I need to go to the this node, right? How to go to this node? We have this previous link reference, right? I can make use of it. So I'll take n as n p r e f now. So n becomes 4100. That is nothing but this node. Using previous link, you can print the data now. You can get the previous node and you can print its data. So now n will become this after executing this line. Now I need to again print n dot data. So execute this line. Now again, we need to go to the previous node of this node. So I need to take n equal to n dot pref. So here I need to include this in a while loop and I need to take the condition that is when while n is not none. Until n becomes none, I need to execute. I need to execute these two lines. That is because I'll explain you. We move to the last node. Now n is this. It will check while n is not none. Yes, n is not none. It is 2200. So it will print n dot data. So I'll get 30. Next, n equal to n dot previous reference. So n becomes 4100, this node. Now n is this. So it will check while n is not none. Yes, it is not none. It is 4,100. So it will print its data. So 20 will be printed. Next, it will change n values. n equal to n dot pref. So n becomes 1010. That is nothing but this. Next, again, it will check while n is not none. So n is not none. n is 1010. So it will print its data. So 10 will be printed like this. And n will be n equal to previous reference. So n becomes none now. 
Now again it will execute while n is not none. No, now n is none. So this condition become false. So it will come out of the loop. Right. So here again I need to take a while loop and I'll take n is not none. And here you need to print its data. So I'll take uh, copy this, paste this, print n dot data. And here you need to take n equal to n dot previous reference. Now we are done. We are done with the forward traversing as well as backward traversing. But to check whether this method works properly or not, firstly, we need to add few elements to that. For that, we need to see insertion operation. So that we'll see in the next tutorial. For now, we can just print empty linked list. So for that, I'll take WLL, the class name, and I'll create the object from that. I'll take the object name as DL1, W linked list. And here DL1 dot print LL. I'll call this method. For now, it is empty. We'll get message as linked list is empty. Sorry, this is the spelling mistake. So here we can see message linked list is empty. If I take print LL reverse, if you call this method and if I execute this, it will print linked list is empty. So that's it for now guys. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about the insertion operation. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will meet you in next class. Till then, take care.